Welcome to another episode of your Technology Questions Answered. We are May 1st, and I'm your host, Steve Smith, a.k.a. Z-Axis. And today, like I told you last week, we are going to install a Microsoft application within Linux using Wine. And I have chosen the application Play on Linux, which is a derivative of Wine, because it allows people that are not familiar with Wine to use the application with relative ease. I'm going to show you three websites first, and then we're going to head on to the installation process itself. Of course, I'm going to have suggestions for you to worry about. While you're doing all this, please keep in mind, all of this is free. You won't have to take out your credit card at all for any of these steps. So let's get on to the websites themselves. So right now we're looking at the WineHQ website, which is at winehq.org. Again, keep in mind, all the links to these websites will be in the show notes, which you could actually easily get to if you have our toolbar. All this information is at www.zedaxis.net. So now we are currently at the WineHQ website. You can go around and see the, ins the download and support and whatever. You know, if you click support, you will have many documentations and FAQs. But how about we start in the first place? You should ever go in a website, the About section. And this one explains to you that Wine lets you run Windows software on, an, on other operating systems, this including Macintosh. So even Macintosh can't natively play by itself the Windows applications as long as you're still running within the OS X environment. So people use Wine in Linux and in Macs to run their software. How do you know which software works within Wine? Well that is easy. You go to the application database of the Wine HQ website which is accessible at appdb.winehq.org. Here you have lists of all the most popular software that's currently being supported by them. But if you don't have your software that you're looking for at the beginning of this page, you could just go and click right here, Browse Apps. All you need to do is type in the name of the application. In our case, we will type iTunes. Showing entry one of one. Luckily for us, there's only one iTunes in this world multiple versions all of them indicated these colors are all shown as you can see they will tell you which ones aren't worth your time we're dealing with seven which is actually silver so we just click here now here is what's gonna happen on this page you'll look at it it says what works what doesn't what else was tested not very much was tested in it, so I'll just warn you, I have tested several parts of it. This, this noted EXE I was able to make occur only when using the beta release of one of the other applications that we're going to install. And you will get the screen going black a few times because, of course, just like the video game problem, Linux runs OpenGL and Windows runs with DirectX for graphics. So let's go and see the application website of the application we're going to actually use. Yes, I know that was redundant. We're going to be using Play on Linux. Play on Linux, according to website, is a piece of software which allows you to easily install and use numerous games and apps designed to run with Microsoft Windows. Of course, they do give you a warning like I just did. Few games are compatible with GNU Linux at the moment, and it's certainly a factor preventing the migration to the system. Play on Linux brings a cost free, accessible, and efficient solution to this problem. You know who this would help, actually? People playing games like World of Warcraft, where there are millions of users playing the game. Applications that have numerous users playing the games or using the applications are more likely to have the support on this website and on the WineHQ website because more people are going to want to migrate to Linux and still retain use of these applications. So let's go on to the actual usage of this application which is going to be done in the demonstration. So let's switch over. 
So like I just said, I have upgraded to Ubuntu 11.04, codename Natty Narwhal. The only difference here is a lot, but it's not that bad. On the far left of the screen is a bunch of icons. If you want to find most of your applications, you just click here, media apps, installed. Heck, if you want to be even more, just click up there and now you have all your applications. Besides that, all you have to do to install new software is click Ubuntu Software Center, which is almost in the middle for us here. Go to the search application in the corner, type in wine. For all this to work, you need wine tricks, play on Linux, and wine Microsoft Windows compatibility layer. Once they're installed, and all you have to do to install is click and click the button right here. Mine's already installed, so it's actually indicated as removed. Once these are installed, we can commence to the next step. So like I just said, click up here, the little Ubuntu sign. Now play on Linux. This is the name of the application. Click the application. It will load. This is where it starts getting very fast with the change of speed depending on your internet. Click install. The application I've chosen for this test is iTunes 7 because I've done several tests. Click multimedia, not iTunes 10, but iTunes 7. There, click apply. Follow the instructions, click forward. It will just check a bunch of stuff in the computer, make sure everything's there. We're missing a package in our case, so we click install. Just like I told you, I just recently upgraded. Upgrading in Linux keeps the computer secure, but it does have some odd side effects. You might see the screen go black once or twice while we're installing only because most applications are designed for DirectX. We're currently using OpenGL in the computer, which is roughly the same principle, but not the same application of the same technology. On a good note though, most graphics cards that are current support both. And as you see, my download rate's not too bad, even if I only have 802.11G in this laptop. But that's just another note for everybody. We are doing this on a laptop, even though I record on a desktop. I'm only missing about 13 megs. Actually, excuse me, 23 megs, 20 megs, 19. Just so you all know, this is the longest part of the installation, the actual download. If you wanted to try iTunes 10, you'd actually have to go and get the file from the internet. It saves time there, but it's even more buggy than this one, which has had some uh, ironing done into the program to be roughed out. We're almost finished installing iTunes 7. At this point, it's going to look exactly like Windows. So follow the instructions like you would in Windows. Accept the terms to the license agreement. I say uncheck all three here, you won't need them. Doesn't matter which one you click. iTunes will complain if you hit no though. Copy new files. I already warned you about the screen going black. That one is going to be normal. I even explained it had to do with the difference between DirectX and OpenGL. Again, goes black. There, finish. Everything gone back to full color. So click finish. Decide where you want to put your icons. Then click forward, even though we can see it barely. There, now we're done. To load the application, you got two choices. You can click this or run, or you can click 
the icon here. By the way, you can change the icon itself. Just continue. Little iTunes library, not the store. Otherwise, you're going to see big advertisements for no reason. There. And to prove it works, creme de la creme. There. You can exit now at will. It'll take a few seconds. Completely normal. Although, if ever it gets stalled. Hold on. Move this over to the side. And you would click this. And right click and close this application and it's gone there. now if you wanted to uninstall the application just bear in mind it does stick a little bit if you're running the application but to remove the application itself after select the icon within play on Linux click remove just follow the instructions there's not that many and you're done and it's gone and that's it if you find any bugs you can either go to the playonlinux.com website you can go to the winehq.org website but more specifically you can go to the app database for application database for wine which is at appdb.winehq.org So as I just showed you, it's relatively easy to go and get the applications and the kits that you are required to actually install Windows applications. The websites are all there for your use to see which applications are currently supported. It's very easy to see what are the current bugs. In our case, disnoda.exe is the most common bug for iTunes 7 and iTunes 10 as I tested it. So don't worry about that, that's relatively normal. They will come around to finding a bug fix to that and you just have to watch the website for that. My current actual suggestion for that, a replacement for iTunes, imagine this, just recently installed, is Banshee. If you go onto the screen of the brand new 11.04 of Natty Narwhal, you will see under the audio a Banshee player. And get this people, the Banshee player connects to your iTunes. So just putting that out there. So as we go along, we're going to be showing you other things to do in Linux. Next week, I am going to show you how to install your printer. Your multifunction printer might not work, but I'm going to try to find a solution in the next week to see if I can get some parts of that to work. But for those that use normal single-use printers, I will show you how to get your printer to work within Linux. So until next week, that has been your technology questions answered. I'm Steve Smith, a.k.a. Z-Axis, your host. Don't forget to subscribe to my show, whether on iTunes, audio, and video, or on YouTube. Head over to my website to send me any questions, comments, stories, or suggestions at www.zedaxis.net. And if you want to support the show, as you've seen for the last two or three episodes, you can actually buy our merchandise directly from the cafepress.ca slash store. Currently it says, I'm just a mouse click away. So have a great day, and let's see you all next week. And don't forget, people, next week is Mother's Day. So, I'm warning you, don't forget her. She might take off your head, but I won't if you watch me Monday instead of Sunday. Have a great day.